Jesse again, and in this video, we're going to talk about the two slight rules changes for three and four player games. Now, they're very simple, but really fun. The first one is called the easy target rule. Now, what's cool about hype tag is that when you're playing with three or four players, the turn order is not linear. It doesn't go one person, one person, one person. You actually sometimes get some say about who to tag, kind of like in a real game of tag. So here's how it works. It's very simple. Let's say it's my turn. The rule is I have to tag the easy target, and the easy target is any opponent that has the fewest or is tied for the fewest tag cards in their field. So for example, I'm set up for a three player game right now. So I'm one player, got a player over here and a player over here. If we were playing four player, we might have a fourth player here. And if I'm, it's my turn to tag, I basically just have to look and be like, okay, this player has three tag cards in their field. This player has four. I must tag this player, boom. It's that simple. But sometimes, let's say this player has four and this player has four, now I get a choice. And if you're playing your early games, my strong advice is don't toil over the choice for too long, just tag somebody, right? Just like if you're on the playground, you'd just be like, I got you. But sometimes, especially if people are getting low on cards, it might be advantageous for you to tag, tag a particular player. So for example, let's say this player over here had only one card left in their hand, and I played an ambush. An ambush is the one that lets me steal a card. So I'd be like, okay, I play an ambush, I steal their last card, I have now forced them to go out because they can't tag, and I'm the punk, and I get a reward for being the punk. So that's a reason why I might tag this player as opposed to that player. Or let's say this player has some good characters in play. When you call a timeout, you lose your characters. So that might be another reason that I would choose to tag this player, because if they have to call a timeout, that's a way for me to get rid of those characters out of their sideline. So those are just two examples of why you might tag one player over the other. The second rule change is called the bystander rule. Once we, once we hit timeout, um, there's a reward for the punk, the last player to tag, and then, of course, the Wimp loses their characters and any cards they have left in hand. But in a three or four player game, you also get rewarded for having the most cards left in your hand. So if I have six cards and everyone else has fewer than six, I'm going to get an extra move for being the bystander. If the two of us are tied and we both have six, we both get that move. And if I was the punk, if I tag this person out and I have the most cards, I'm going to get the moves for the punk and for being a bystander. And remember, the Wimp does not get to count how many cards they have left in their hand because they lose everything when they go out. The other thing to know about playing with three or four players, you can get some really fun, like, sass battles going on. So let's say, like, this player plays a, a mischief card and this player doesn't want them to and they sass it to block it and then they play a sass card to block their sass card. I might be sitting over here being like, well, I don't want you to block that. I'm going to play my sass card. And it can get really fun. And, and so the, the thing to remember is, uh, if two people want to play a SAS card at the same time, priority always passes clockwise from the active player, meaning the player whose turn it is. So this player does something. If we both want to play a SAS card at the same time, I would get priority to go first and then this player. And just remember, once a bunch of SAS cards are played and nobody wants to play another SAS card, they resolve kind of in reverse order from how they were played. So the last SAS card played happens and then you go back on down the chain until all the effects happen. And nobody else can play another SAS card in the middle of that. Once we've stopped playing SAS cards, everything resolves and no more SAS cards can be played. And if you've ever played any trading card games, that's a very common way of resolving response cards. So have a great time with three and four player. There's a lot going on, but once y'all know how to play, it moves really fast and it's super fun.